all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Ms. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The I rise recognized. in strong support of the Legislative Branch Appropriations Act. While this subcommittee may be small, it has a very important role. I very much appreciate the hard work and collegial attitude of all the members of this subcommittee, particularly the contributions and cooperation of our ranking member, Ms. Herrera Butler. This is a good bill, and I'm proud of this bill, and I'm proud that it makes a substantial investment to expand recruitment and retention of staff, prioritizes funding to expand diversity and inclusion campus-wide, and funds needed investments to support the day-to-day -day operations of the House so that we can support our constituents. Included within this bill is a 21 percent increase for the members' representational allowance, which covers staff, district office space, and day-to-day -day operations for lawmakers to best serve our constituents. This has been a priority for me as I recognize the important role of expanding pay and benefits for our staff as we strive to recruit a more diverse workforce in our offices and then to retain these staff instead of losing them to the private sector. Additionally, this year's bill makes important steps in exploring other areas where we can expand benefits for staff to compete with the private sector. And so, this year's report directs the Chief Administrative Officer to conduct a benefit and retention study to look at possibilities such as tuition credits, the creation of a 520, uh, 529 accounts, a housewide leave policy, and child care subsidies so that we can continue to meet the needs of existing and future staff. It is vital that we prioritize initiatives to expand a diverse and talented workforce here on Capitol Hill. The report provides an additional $350,000 to establish a task force within CAO to include the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, the Office of Congressional Workplace Rights, and any other House office as may be necessary to develop a methodology for regularly surveying the House workforce on pay and benefit issues, to provide guidance and support for the content and development of a centralized human resources hub, and to make policy recommendations. Additionally, while the bill continues the prohibition of cost of living adjustment increases for members, in order to ascertain all the facts on this issue, we also require the CAO to provide a report comparing members' pay with executive and managers' pay in the private sector, who have similar levels of experience and responsibility. In a year full of trauma and hurt, with the apex being the insurrection on January 6th, our human resource entities within the Capitol complex have adapted to the evolving and increasing mental health needs of our campus. The bill includes $2.3 million, a $635,000 increase for the Office of Employee Assistance, and a $1.7 million allocation for the Office of Well-Being to ensure that people here on Capitol Hill have the resources to support their needs for our community and to fund culturally sensitive mental health services so everyone feels comfortable seeking the support they need. We've also included $2 million for the House Modernization Initiatives account to build off last year's efforts to make Congress more effective, efficient, and transparent on behalf of the American people. Second, the bill provides $15.4 million to expand the paid internship program. This will increase the amount to $35,000 per member office to pay interns. We have also extended this funding to committees and continue to support these funds being used for interns both in D.C. and in district offices. We want to make sure that any citizen in this country, any young person in this country who wants to come to Washington, D.C., uh, is able to do that. And we're trying to eliminate those economic barriers so that people can come here and get the experience they need uh, to improve their lot in life and to serve their country. But we also recognize the ongoing inequities in congressional internships. And so we include language directing the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, working in conjunction with the Chief Administrative Office, 
to conduct a feasibility study on recreating a centralized house internship program, similar to the old LBJ intern program from many years ago, which could provide various support services, such as housing, training, professional development, and focus outreach on students attending historically black colleges and universities, tribal colleges and, uni and universities, Hispanic serving institutions, and other minority serving institutions. I believe this is a vital step for us to create a pipeline for students from all backgrounds, all economic uh, areas to come and work on Capitol Hill. The bill also includes $3 million for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion and directs the CAO to increase their staff cap from seven to 10 staffers to allow them the additional uh, workers that they need. Additionally, once again, this year's bill includes language to permit DACA uh, recipients uh, to be able to work, the DREAMers, to be able to work for Congress and other legislative branch agencies. Turning to other legislative branch agencies, the bill provides strong support for the security and operational needs of the House and surrounding Capitol complex. H.R. 4346 includes $600 million for the Capitol Police, which is a almost $90 million increase above the FY 2021 bill. This bill provides vital resources for training, recruitment, retention, and readiness efforts. This funding will provide for a total of 2,112 sworn officers. Additionally, this continues to build off previous efforts in ensuring a robust trauma and resiliency program for our sworn and civilian officers. This is an extremely important investment as they continue to heal from the events of January 6th and Good Friday. And we saw further testimonials yesterday in the hearing as to why exactly this investment is needed. The bill includes an increase of $37 million from 2021 for the Library of Congress. As it is, this subcommittee's duty to protect the valuable collections and preserve the library's ability to chronicle this great nation and provide access to our history for generations to come. And it includes $3.8 million to continue the library's work on the Veterans History Project to collect and preserve the personal accounts of American war veterans. The bill also increases funding for the architect of the Capitol over 2021 by $152 million to address necessary construction activities such as the Cannon office building renovation. Also included are various other provisions to ensure the Capitol Visitor Center and Capitol Complex are accessible for individuals with disabilities and all visitors who wish to tour the Capitol or meet with their members of Congress. And finally, the bill includes language for the removal of statues or busts in the Capitol of those who tried to overthrow the government of the United States or were white supremacists. And before I finish, I would like to recognize the staff for all of their hard work and time they have put into this bill. From the majority committee staff, I'd like to thank my clerk, Steve Marques, and Rachel Jenkins from my personal office. From the minority committee staff, I'd like to thank Michelle Reinshuttle, uh, and again, to the chair of the full committee, Rosa Delora, uh, representative, the ranking member, Kay Granger, Ms. Herrera Butler. Uh, this was a great team effort to put this thing together, and uh, we're proud to submit it uh, to the body today, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves, the gentlewoman from 